Welcome to Love Worth Finding with pastor, teacher, and author Adrian Rogers, reaching out with God's love, bringing people to Christ, touching lives around the world, and helping you find the answers you need today. Join us as we prepare to open God's Word and discover how your life can be changed forever by His great love worth finding. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. I come for it. I come for it. I shelter towers of refuge and strength. What a mighty fire!
We've got to go back to the basics. A church is not some sort of a glorified country club with stained glass windows and a steeple on top. There are three things. If we would make Jesus known to our neighbors and the nations, there are three things we're going to find in these eight verses. The very first is this, that we need to recognize His presence in us. You see, Jesus is still active and alive on planet Earth today, and He still has a body. In the Gospels, it was His material, physical body. In the book of Acts, it is His new body, which is the church. We have been given a commission. We have been given a responsibility. Now, we need to stop doing things for Jesus. We need to start letting Him do something through us. There are three miracles in the Christian life. There's the first miracle, which is the new birth. That's a wonderful miracle. There's the concluding miracle, the last miracle, which is our translation when we're made to be like the Lord Jesus. But in between that first miracle and that last miracle, there's a, mil a middle miracle, and that is the life that we live. Our life is to be a supernatural life. Now, I want you to remember this, that the Christian life is not your responsibility. It is your response to His ability. Major Ian Thomas said about this, I can't. He never said I could. He can. He always said He would. And so uh, that's the first thing we need to do. We need to recognize His presence in us. Now with that, the Bible says, look if you will, in this passage of Scripture, uh, look in verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking to them of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Back up to verse 2. He gave commandments unto the apostles. Now, why did he give them this mission impossible? Well, he gave them this mission impossible because he knew that in him... Uh, they could do it. But he also knew without him, they could not do it. What were, what were the commandments that he gave? Well, we don't have to guess. We know. Do you want to know what Jesus' marching orders are for, for Bellevue? And since you're a member, for you, I put in your margin Matthew 28, 19 and 20. You know it. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, this is not a request. This is a command. Jesus is king. If you are not a part of obeying this command, listen to me, I want to say it as sweetly as I can. You're not right with God. Furthermore, you're guilty of high treason against your king. Jesus said, I have commanded you to go and make disciples. We are to be making Jesus known. Now, what does he say to do in Matthew 28, 19, and 20? Three things. Number one, we are to make them. Go ye therefore and make disciples. Now, he didn't say make decisions. People talk about great evangelistic crusades, and they say we had a, a thousand decisions. He didn't say make decisions. He said make disciples. Make them. Not only are we to make them, we're to mark them. He said baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Don't you minimize baptism. Jesus commanded that we be baptized. Jesus commenced his public ministry by baptism. Jesus concluded his public ministry commanding baptism. Once a person is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, that person is to be baptized by immersion, marking himself out, saying, I belong to Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Some of you haven't been baptized because you say, I mess up a $40 hairdo. I'm serious. You say, well, I, that's incidental. It's not incidental. Jesus has commanded it, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You know why I wear that ring? That's, about, that's the only piece of jewelry I have, unless you call that watch jewelry. You know why I wear that? That ring shows that I belong to Joyce. 
I'm a one-woman man. I belong to that girl, and I love her, and I'm not ashamed of her. When I go out of town, I don't take the ring off. I belong to a lady. Now, you know what baptism means? Friend, it means that you belong to Jesus Christ. You're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I want everybody to know. See me up here, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. If you haven't been baptized, you ought to be the first one down this aisle this morning and say, I want to make an appointment for my baptism. That is, if you're truly saved. First you make them, then you mark them, and then you mature them. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. That's the marching orders of Bellevue Baptist Church, to make them, mark them, mature them, moving believers in Jesus toward maturity and ministry. That's what we are all about. And to do it, we need to recognize His presence in us. He hasn't just given us a mission impossible and backed off sitting up there in heaven peering down to see what we're going to do. Jesus lives in His church, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The gospel is what He began to do. The book of Acts is what He continues to do in that first century church. And in this 21st century church, that's what it is all about. Now, Secondly, not only should we recognize his presence in us, but number two, we should rely on his promise to us. Look, if you will, in verses 4 through 8. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They wanted to talk about prophecy. And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. They want to talk about prophecy. He wanted to talk about proclamation. Ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now here Jesus is talking about a promise he'd made. When he was walking with them and talking with them, he gave them a promise. Put in your margin, Luke 24, verse 49. And here's what Jesus said to them. He said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power on high. Jesus said, Don't go out now and start any kind of a ministry until first of all you receive this promise. I am going to send the promise of the Father. What is the promise of the Father? It is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And really this is almost a repeat of the first thing. You see, we need to recognize His presence in us, and then we need to rely on His promise to us. He's not given us a job that we're not able to do. Again, these were unlettered, uncouth people. They had no finances. They had no colleges. They had no seminaries. They had no buildings like this. And He says, go to all the world. But He did not leave them helpless. A man went into a department store one time, a, a preacher, he went back to the back of the department store, one of these big stores like uh, Kmart or something like that. He went back there to where they were selling fishing tackle. And he walked up there and he just, he just asked this question, what is a good bass lure? The man over here shopping turned to him and said, hey, let me tell you about a good bass lure. And he began to talk to this man. And he began to tell him everything about bass lures, the best places to fish, and so forth. The man said, well, thank you very much. And he bought one of the lures, and he started to walk out. This man just followed him all the way out to the car, all the way out to the parking lot. This man was still talking about bass and bass lures and how to catch bass. Now, I'll tell you one thing about that man. The little doubt is that he was a bass fisherman. Little doubt, but that he knew something about what he was talking about, and he was very interested in it. Now, I don't know whether he knew Jesus or not, but probably if that man were a member of a local church and you told him to testify, he said, well, I can't do that. You know why? He was not interested in the subject, not filled with the subject. Friend, when, when Jesus Christ is real to you, witnessing will be just as natural as talking about bass lures was to that bass fisherman. 
You see, what's down in the well comes up in the bucket, doesn't it? The reason, I, Jesus said, you be witnesses unto me. I've said it many times from this pulpit. Before I preach, I get on my knees and preach because anything I can talk you into, somebody else can talk you out of. But when the Holy Spirit of God takes the, the man of God and his words and brings them home to your heart, then it's not Adrian. It is the Holy Spirit of God speaking to you. God wants to use you and your neighbors, with your neighbors. And God wants to use you with the nations. Our job is making Jesus known uh, to our neighbors and the nations. We're to begin in Jerusalem. That's our community. And then Judea, that would be tantamount to our state. And then Samaria, that would be tantamount to the Mid-South, and then the whole world. That's what we exist for, folks. This is the year of evangelism. God has so blessed our church, and God has given us so much, but we're not going to sit on our hands, sit and soak and say what good boys and girls we are. We're going to take this community for Jesus Christ. I mean that. Say amen. amen. We're going to do it. I, and I don't say it arrogantly. God has given us that assignment. Give God a hand. We're going to do it. And we're going to share Jesus Christ because Jesus wants us to do it. This is our Jerusalem. And we can't play leapfrog. We can't jump over our Jerusalem and go across the nation and go across the world. We start here with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the, the purpose of this church is making Jesus known to our neighbors and to the nations. And so how are we going to do it? We're going to recognize His presence in us. We're going to rely upon His promise to us. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Now, we're not to witness about Bellevue Baptist Church. We're not to witness about the Baptist denomination. People need Jesus. They need Jesus. Witnesses unto me. One man was trying to make a Baptist out of a Methodist. And the Methodist didn't want to be made a Baptist. And so the Baptist got in an argumentative mode and said, well, how come you're a Methodist? He said, well, my daddy was a Methodist and my granddaddy was a Methodist. That makes me a Methodist. The Baptist said, well, wait a minute. If your daddy was a fool and your granddaddy was a fool, what would that make you? He said, well, I guess I'd be a Baptist. <laughs> You know, we're not witnessing to some denomination. People need Jesus. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Now, this is the divine strategy, and listen to me carefully. God can use you. Say amen. God can use you with what you have. God can use you where you are, and God will supply your every need. If this church ever really gets serious about sharing Jesus Christ, what an impact we will make in this, in this particular city. God has made a promise to us, a solemn promise, that we would receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon us. Now, here's the third and final thing I want you to see this morning is as we think about what God wants us to do, we need to respond to His program through us. What is His program through us? Look again in verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. How about your neighbors? Do your neighbors know Jesus? Do they know you're saved? Do they know that you have anything more than just sort of a cultural Christianity? You know, really, they don't care how much you know about Bible prophecy. The, the apostles said, Lord, you're going to at this time restore the kingdom to Israel. He said, that's, that's not your concern. That's not for you to know. Your business is to be a witness. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, one of the greatest preachers who ever lived, said, I had rather lead one soul to Jesus than to unpick all the mysteries in the divine word. To lead one soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. One man applied for missionary service. 
And the, and the uh, man who was uh, reviewing his application said, well, what are you doing in your neighborhood where you are right now? He said, well, not much. He said, well, please don't go across the ocean and do it. You see, if you're not doing it here, you're not a candidate for missionary service anywhere. We need to recognize and, and fulfill his program in us right now. Now, folks, I hope you're going to be with me. As we study this book of Acts together, we're going to find out how the early church did it, and we are going to get with it. Tell you a story. Preachers have told it for a long time, but it's a good one. A man was known as a great fisherman, and uh, he would come back with a ton of fish, a boatload of fish. One day a stranger said, would you take me fishing with you? The man said, sure, come on. So he got out in the middle of the lake, and this man who was known to be such a great fisherman reached under a seat and got a stick of dynamite. And he lit the fuse and threw it overboard. It sank to the bottom, a tremendous explosion, and hundreds of dead fish just floated to the surface. This man started picking them up. This other man reached in his billfold, or pocket, pulled out his billfold with a badge, and said, Sir, I'm the game warden. What you are doing is illegal. You are in serious trouble. The fisherman didn't say a word. He just reached under his seat, got another stick of dynamite, and lit it and handed it to that man. <laughs> said, are you just going to sit there and talk, or are you going to fish? <laughs> Now, I want to ask you a question. How about you? Now, listen to me. Are you going to come to Bellevue Baptist Church, listen to a sermon, make some notes, or would you say, dear God, make me a soul winner? Make me a witness. Again, a witness is somebody who just tells what he's seen and heard. Friend, there's no greater joy than to lead a soul to Jesus Christ. Recognize His presence in us. Rely upon His power to us. And remember His program for us. We are to be witnesses in, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. We're going to be living supernaturally. We're going to learn the secret in the book of Acts. And God's people said, Amen. Bow your heads in prayer. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, let me ask, how many of you today can say, Pastor Rogers, I am saved. I do have a testimony. I have seen something. I have heard something. I do know Jesus. I know by the grace of God that if I were to die right now, I would go straight to heaven. I have the absolute assurance of my salvation. Can you lift your hand as a testimony? Thank you. Take them down. Now, if you could not lift your hand, let me lead you in a prayer right now that you give your heart to Jesus. And if you want to be saved, God will save you where you are today. Pray this prayer. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I need to be saved. I want to be saved. Jesus, you died to save me, and you promised to save me. If I would trust you, I do trust you. Right now, this moment, I am a sinner. My sin deserves judgment and hell, but I need mercy. I want grace. Jesus, you died to save me. You promised to save me if I would trust you. I do trust you. Like a child right now, I trust in the finished work of Calvary. Thank you for paying for my sin. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you walked out of that grave. I believe that you're able to save me. And I turn my life over to you right now. Begin now to make me the person you want me to be and help me never to be ashamed of you. In your name I pray. Amen. If today you pray to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we thank God for your decision and we'd like to help you get started on your Christian walk by sending you some resources that will help you find answers for many questions as you learn to walk with Christ. Contact us today and we'll send these right out to you. Also, if this is the first time you've contacted us, we want to give you a free CD titled, Will There Be Peace in the Middle East? 
It's a timely message about God's plan for His people. So if you've never contacted us before, we would love to hear from you. Now, if you'd like a complete copy of today's message, just mention the title, Making Jesus Known, when you get in touch with us. And this sermon is also part of our featured series, Living Supernaturally. This two-volume set includes 13 messages that will help prepare you to live the life God has in store for you. So contact us today for your copy. Well, we truly are humbled and blessed by your financial support, especially during these difficult times. And this month is our way of saying thank you. We'd like to send you a copy of the Living Supernaturally devotional. Ground yourself in the Word and find the path to a godly life. Just ask for it when you send a ministry gift. Plus, for daily encouragement, we'd love for you to join us on the radio. You can listen each day to messages from Dr. Rogers. Just click on the broadcast section of our website to find a station in your area. Or download our daily podcast and take Love Worth Finding with you wherever you go. What a great way to hear God's Word just when you need it, any day of the week. And thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We trust you'll join us again next time as we continue our look at living supernaturally with the message, The Principles of Power. So be sure to join us next week for more of God's great love worth finding.